Hello, everybody. It's been a long time since I was presenting at ATIPI, and I have to say I'm a little nervous to talk to such an uh, esteemed crowd of nerds, nerds shall I say. Uh, nevertheless, I'm really delighted to be here. Um, lately, at two occasions when I was presenting, I was asked if I intentionally always do research on white, male, dead graphic designers. Naturally, I was very alarmed. Uh, happily, it turns out I have to report that this, not, this is not completely true. I researched and wrote also about designers who are still alive, so uh, be aware of that. I might pick you up. Um, I'm always eager to illuminate uh, people about my country, obviously, um, but it has proven a difficult task lately, especially because all those Slovak people, you know, they have a similar design for a flag and similar language, and obviously more, um, more well-known Peter Bilak. So um, recently around Brexit, I actually um, gave up on that issue for two reasons. Firstly, Slovenia is presented in about every decent flight in magazine. And secondly, I guess we should all strive to think about ourselves as European. Um, yes, with different heritage and different languages, as we see. <laughs> but, but, and this part is important, with common opportuni opportunities and challenges. So um, being patriotic is fine, but only to a certain extent, as we learned. As we know, it can quickly lead into problems if people are not well informed and not educated enough. So this actually brings us um, to my talk. For this occasion, I wanted to present a topic somehow related to that. It's about education of young people through a Slovenian children magazine. Through the 17-year-long history, Tsitsiban has served as a, serving, as a driving force of literacy, education, and enlightened, enlightened emancipation of little people, as they, do, as they call them, through rich typography, excellent illustrations, and high level of interactivity. My aim has been to explore the major tendencies in the magazine and the forces, social, economic, political, artistic, which influence them. Because we all know that design is a massive business. And then the reality of research struck. Firstly, it's very difficult to find all copies of issues. And even if you find them, they're all bound and chopped on the sides. Um, secondly, people who were working on the magazine at the beginning are not with us anymore. Talking about that people again. Um, third point, ethics are very strange places. Uh, you might know by yourself. Things got lost, get lost in there very quickly. And fourthly, periodicals especially um, are like ephemera. Um, people throw them away. So um, I was lucky because there are some libraries which we can find issues and there are still many people around who are actually willing to talk to me in the research process. Um, for some mayor culprits, mainly printers um, and typographers, I possess the phone numbers and they are still going to be chased by me in the future. Um, so for this talk, I have rejected a purely chronological arrangement of material. Instead, I will take you on a confusing ride with this machine. Many of you probably know it. Um, Tsitsiban, I think, is just like TARDIS, which we know is bigger on the inside than on the outside. And it seems to have an eternal presence in Slovenian culture. It was influenced by it and also influenced it greatly. This famous novel by Hartley begins with the line, the past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. So from this reason, I have to ask you, especially younger generations maybe, to adjust your mindset a bit because we are so used to contemporary technology, um, it's very easy to misjudge achievements in the past when processes were very cumbersome, as we saw or already today in, in many of, of the talks, and took ages to accomplish. So please bear that in mind throughout the talk. We are talking about past, we are talking history. So, scope. Um, what I'm not going to talk about <laughs> is about the, 20, the last 25 years of the magazine because since, since 1990, um, when Slovenia became independent, uh, Tsitsiban was not a revolutionary magazine anymore, in my opinion, and most important, this is more important, it was not the only magazine which influenced children's work in Slovenia. It was joined by about 50 other magazines, which all tried to get the share of the market, obviously, and that's when this started to happen, advertising. And so I will talk about Tsitsiban as an influential factor from roughly 1945 uh, to late 80s, 1990. So let us, let us really start at the beginning now. Mm, Tsitsiban, I need a sip of water, mm, was born in the most inconvenient of times. We know these scenes, they were present all over Europe. 
and it was clear that we needed heroes. We needed celebrations and rebuilding of houses, cities, values, life. People needed renewal, rebirth. We know that names are important. Name of a periodical is as important as the editorial policy. Name equals brand, and you have to work on it quite hard. In the case of this magazine, actually, that was not necessary. Good luck was late in the cradle, so to speak. The first editor decided to name the magazine after a character from children's song by well-known Slovenian poet Oton Župancic. It is a sort of nickname which actually he gave to his son, um, and it also became the title of this um, famed poetry collection, which is probably in the every single house in Slovenia. So Tsitsiban, in our language, became a synonym for a preschooler. Inquisitive, likes to play, is funny, interested, messy, a normal healthy toddler or a kid, I should say. Um, so the name totally struck, stuck. Sorry. Tsitsiban was not the first magazine focused on young readers, but it was the, un the one which proved to be very, very special venture of the post-war socialist environment. Other magazines either had narrow, um, narrow, narrow focuses on religious upbringing or did they not last long, and most publishers anyway closed during the war. On the, on the one hand, Tsitsiban had clear aims and strategies. One of them was affordability, and accessibility was the second one. From the very beginning, it was printed out in 82,000 copies, which was probably decided on the number of school children in the first year after the Second World War. Mind you, that's a huge number of, uh, for a nation of two million, two million Slovenian speakers. Huh? So we're even smaller than Georgia. Um, so yeah, 82,000. I made an Excel chart. The price on the very beginning was low, 5 din. What does it actually mean? Um, based on the exchange rate in 1945 and buying power, I calculated that today's price would be a bit over euro. So very affordable. We don't get uh, any magazines for euro now in Slovenia. Mm. The first editorial board decided that if they want to educate, the content must be attractive and of very high standard. And the first contact with the magazine is of utter importance. So I will start with covers. Um, there's a slight warning here. For modernists at heart, I advise you that you really shut your eyes tight now. Uh, for what you're going to see, it's really a total overwhelming overdose of delighting creativity with time forms. So let's start. They were simple ones. I should, I should have some help with um, that with Catherine about, you know, to categorize them properly. Simple ones, bold ones, kind of type ones, drawn ones, likable, maybe not very successful. And of course, sort of written ones, and also highly illustrative decorative type. So this is the very first number put together with great care against all odds. It was time of rationing, extreme poverty. There was no paper. There was no paint. There was no mm, printing house almost. And they decided for the full cover printing. This was normal, of course, for political posters, but not for periodicals for kids. The serenity of this illustration and stability of the ge geometric type, which is not too boring and uniform, was surely a good start. Note the content of the illustration, though. The kid is building, and his toy soldier is naturally a partisan who liberated him. And colors? Warm, friendly, reassuring. One of the thinkers behind the concept was an editor at the publishing house, Christina Brink. She wrote a PhD in pedagogics in 1939, which I think it was a huge achievement for a woman in Slovenia at that point. And she was a psychologist, editor, author, poet, and translator of children's literature. She understood children's hearts. She was a great advocate for artistic texts and illustrations, saying that children must be challenged into unknown, and that literature and art determine children and their, they open their potential. Very quickly, one realizes that the editorial board was very serious about the quality. They invited academic painters and architects who were already established authors to illustrate Tsitsiban. One of them at the very beginning was, for example, Janko Mahan, who was an architect and had many successful projects from 1920s onwards. In this way, they probably also secured good implementation in the printing house, where Tsitsiban was printed and where authors, for example, Omahan, were already at home. Print House was privately established as Josip Chemajer Lithography in the uh, 1920s, and it was, of course, under socialist regime nationalized, and then changed into Artistic Institute of Lithography and became University Printing House and Lithography, and later in the 50s renamed into Mladinska Kniga Printing House. 
it was really an excellent establishment and you might actually have some of their products uh, on your shelves too. Since Tsitsipan was also meant to support school curriculum, as textbooks were rare and difficult to afford, it was naturally connected to the school year. The first number of each year starts in September, and from that on one can follow seasons and learn about seasons, and we go to autumn, winter, spring, and summer. Some of covers have a clear political influence. Red Star, Flags, Partisan Hats. This is a cover from the year 1948 when Tito and Stalin had a conflict which resulted in Yug Yugoslavia's expulsion from the Communist Information Bureau, Cominform as it was called. And yes, we escaped the Iron Curtain, but we evidently kept the Red Stars and socialism. And we started also to build on the hero figure of Tito. Tsitsipan wanted to be modern though, but with sense of tradition, hence awkward combination of photo of Tito and strange heraldic frame with flags and crest of Yugoslavia. Note also the logo, again very non-illustrative and rational. Bleeded photos were part of innovation in late 40s. Blue and red seems to be the preferred combination for some time, especially with photos, and then um, from 40s onward anyway, red ink was very cheap, was used very, very, very often. The readership uh, was not set in stone, though one thing was clear, the magazine needed to support state politics, at least on the covers, as we'll see later. These are also the typical topics of the time, heritage of partisans who liberated the country, and youth work actions, voluntary labor, activi labor activities of young people to rebuild the country's roads and infrastructure. There was a lot of that. In the late 40s, an invention, cover goes around, so the front and back are connected, there's more content to be put on. It was often painters, actually, who were the most inventive with the logo. But then, from 50s onwards, we see the first standardized logo and also some thought of more unified covers in the year 51, 52. It seems, though, when I was browsing through that every new decade had a go to standardize the cover, but it was usually short-lived and it soon dissolved into cacophony again. Year 66-67 brings the first long-term influence of modernism, so to speak. And apart from that, we also have the whole year of old nursery rhymes on the cover, which was also uh, a new thing. That was also the year when second Icograda Congress was held at the Alpine Holiday Resort of Blit. According to the vice president of Icograda at that time, Grega Kushak, who was from Yugoslavia, that's the time when representative of, ha of Haas type foundry actually came and made deals with printing houses in Yugoslavia to buy Helvetica, as we will see later. Back cover becomes also important, again, 67, 8. We travel around Slovenia and we educate children about towns they can visit. And that's not surprising either, since tourism was very much encouraged and was seen as one of the important economic activities. In the late 60s, the magazine was rebranded as Magazine for the Little Children, and as a result, the concept of counting was introduced on the covers. This is also the first year that I noticed that they actually um, included art editor and technical editor into the editorial board. Before, there was no, th only illustrations were signed, and there was no um, sense of who was actually doing the insights. So Helvetica took a few years to be actually used, uh, apart from being available, there was another factor. In this period, actually, Slovenian design was already a well-established profession, and just a few years earlier, we saw the biggest, most successful corporate identity make for the biggest, made for the biggest bank, Ljubljanska Banka, which was designed by this studio, MCCV, Skalar, Mechtik, Suhodolc, Vipotnik, serious guys, as you see, and looked like anything else in the West, really. It was very thorough, made a corporate identity with handbook, and it took them ages. So this was definitely influence, and brings us up to the next phase, more educational content on the covers, which was also addressed through the stories inside. Here, for example, Borut Ingolic, um, prominent children's book author, wrote beautiful stories connected to individual vehicles on the cover, which were illustrated by Maria Lucia Stupica. Stupica. And sometimes priority was in the expression of the artist, as example here, collages by Radmila Novak Ciucha. Later on, we see the influence, for example, of the notion that small children can read capitals better, and therefore there is a change in logo again. 
and at this point we come to the um, to the print run which is already over 100,000 copies certain individual edit editors have huge impact on the visual identity as well as to the content in this case the editor was Bojo Kos and he made a total facelift as you can see things got really crammed up and in four, four years this young fellow uh, grows up quickly gets really fat and not so kind looking don't you think <laughs> he's also if I may add um, starts to look right instead of looking uh, left as earlier um, it was definitely a time of rising economic and political challenges uh, it's 80s and that's when I'm, I kind of, when I was browsing through, I kind of um, lost interest in doing research because it gets so crowded and so without any order, I, I felt that I was like, okay, maybe that's the point when I cut, actually. Uh, so we will leave this guy here. I'll talk about Bojo Kos later a bit. Uh, and we'll, talk, we'll uh, focus on topics inside the magazine. Um, with diverse topics, eloquent delivery, and impact on generations, Tsitsiban could be compared to Sesame Street, I was thinking. Um, there are so many topics that we cannot possibly talk about all of them, of course. I made a sort of selection of the most interesting issues or the most interestingly visualized issues. Um, from the outset, as we said, Tsitsiban was intended for young readers, but soon acquired also this additional pedagogical educational perspective. It was also given to their parents, educators, and teachers, and it became very interactive. You would have a lot of um, a lot of parts of the city ban where you would actually get the, the um, um, additional text saying, "Well, grandpa grandparents should read you this story or do this crossword together with a parent or whatever," and they were using it in the classrooms as well. So, similar to illustrations, stories were written by first-rate authors. Genres were very diverse, um, songs, poems, stories, fairy tales, fables, scripts for stage, even uh, everything. Stories were, of course, patriotic, socially engaged, politically defined. National consciousness was important, and worship of Tito, as you said, and the partisans was very present, quite long. And funny thing, the elements from socialist iconography were very much present, even in topics which are totally non-political. Red Star is part of Christmas, you know, it's, it's th that kind of star, and even Father Christmas has a red star on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, of course, we abandoned Father Christmas. It was not Father Christmas, it's called Božiček in Slovenia. Uh, we cancelled him and we got this um, Grandpa Frost or whatever, I should, Didek Mraz, yeah? So uh, Father Christmas was gone, was prohibited, um, but yeah, it's this, this kind of feature stayed on. More interesting, there were also very important topics uh, for today. Death was very present, especially in the first uh, numbers, first years. Orphans, granny and her orphan grandchildren, stories about um, lost parents, lost uh, families, you know, deportation, all of this was translated into stories and uh, used a tone of, uh, tone of language that actually children would be invited to share their own story. Uh, immigrants. Hira, for example, that, that uh, is a story about a Bosnian girl who comes to live in Slovenia and it's actually um, told, the story is told by um, a girl from a family who's saying, Hira is coming, my mom is going to be her mom too. So it's very touching, all this uh, language, how they actually try to, to talk about these topics and teaching children about solidarity and sharing. Uh, many of these difficult and sensitive issues were tackled through beautiful poems as well. Not some sort of funny, witty nursery songs, but real poetry, um, hard to read maybe sometimes, but with very sensual illustrations. Combinations of texts and pictures were very diverse, depending on the story itself. Often they were about values, about courtesy and behaving, and, and so forth. Uh, language. Language played an important role, obviously. Um, they were all... Uh, well, well thought through uh, literacy topics, which later on became very an interactive exercises, and they were changing in style through the periods, of course. And again, just as Dr. Sue's books, Tsitsiban was a lifeline for readers who struggled, actually. Um, grammar was explained through humorous texts, and it is one of the constant features throughout the years. Typographically speaking, layout is very diverse, something for good readers, something for smaller children learning to read. And of course, these stories were not 
all about partisans. We, they were also appropriated fairy tales later on, topics about educating about firefighters, cars in cities, urban centers, uh, astronauts, uh, electricity plants, all, all this stuff, everything about around us. Each of them, of course, designed slightly differently, experimenting with type and picture, combinations of different illustrators and everything. Um, Art education was very interesting. Educating children about art did not stop, stop with publishing uh, the best Slovenian painters, but also was continued f uh, with proper lectures how children actually can draw by themselves. In September, section usually started with easy shapes, then throughout the year got to more complex issues. And in the year uh, 73, 4, we have an amazing collection of texts about color theory, titled About Colors. Um, firstly, they introduced colors as such, and then in the middle of the year, when a uh, neoconstructivist painter Drago Hrvatsky took over, it became a proper course, starting with happy and sad colors, schemes of mixing colors, continued with warm and cool colors of the color wheel, harmony of colors, color techniques, materials, and colors for different media, perspective, everything. In short, in depth art classes for children. But there's an interesting hidden agenda here as well, already. Uh, it's 80s. It is the first time that the witness, we witness the cooperation with industry, or I shall say clever advertising. Um, in each issue of this section, it appeared logo of Aero Factory, and the headline said, I drew, I color with Aero paints. Invited, of course, children to influence parents to buy them proper um, materials. So, um, natural sciences. These topics were very diverse. Educational topics included hygiene and visit to the doctor, um, answers to very important questions for children, such as what is belly button for, or why we are scared. So uh, if you are a parent, maybe you know about this marvelous book. Well, this was just like that. Um, apart from high level of information, illustration and layout really supported the experience of getting information. Um, and look at this typography. It's organized, it points you to these silly questions, you know, like, what are iron objects made or, or of, or um, why, I why, why, why are clothes warm and thi things like this. Simple questions, uh, but very sometimes very difficult to answer, actually. Experiments were present from the very beginning, but science started really to dominate in the magazine in the 70s, um, when um, that guy, you know, who was painting this weird logo, um, a physicist, cartoonist, and illustrator, Bojo Kos, who became ed editor in uh, 76, 77, actually started to put in a lot of experiments. Uh, it was very, very, uh, very good improvement on the natural sciences in the Tsitsiban. Design and technology, another topic. Um, it was, of course, amazing time for technology, for children living somewhere in the countryside. Uh, production line for cars probably, you know, sounded something very exciting, especially because it was 10 more years before average family would actually afford a car. And note that inventions and technology were explained in Sans Serif. Um, they were explained in Sans Serif, sorry, but illustration is very expressive, uh, which I found quite interesting in some of the layouts. Television was still rather exotic in 50s, as you can see, according to the title typeface, <laughs> I would say, which was usually used for uh, Japanese uh, Japanese stories or yeah, something from the East. Um, issues were also full of crazy ideas about DIY projects. And many uh, favorite topics were continually present, such as make your own skis. Ideas were presented <laughs> in clear and understandable layout, but also using language appropriate for children. Uh, I actually photocopied some for my kids so they can do them now. Um, they certainly tell a story of material situation in the post-war post Europe. And also there were about, you know, about traditions in societies such, such as Mardi Gras carnivals, which neither church nor communists can actually stop or erase. Making toys was quite popular as well, but today's parents would be probably rather alarmed at this proposal's historical perspective. Back then, homemade catapult or simple rifle was just normal toys. One of my favorite features is a story about uh, publishing process. The child is asking why it takes so much time to get a new issue of Tsitsiban, and the whole process is actually explained in a story told by the magazine itself. Uh, the dialogue is all about writers, typographers, illustrators, lithographers, lithographic stones even. So quite into detail, but very clearly written. 30 years on, the topic was resurrected in a special issue on how the Tsitsiban is made, which again explains the whole process of making the magazine, but of course this time in a new environment and modern printing equipment but um, 
quite well. While it might be not a superb visual achievement, every step was brilliantly and thoroughly explained, really. And one funny feature, printer's error, comes in the shape of a naughty printing elf who takes all the responsibility for mistakes, obviously, but then towards the end um, also suggests a printing session at home with potato, obviously. One issue from 80s actually stands out completely. When 123 national delegations from all over the world gather to say goodbye to Tito, Tsitsiban publishes a special number, no colors here. It's beautifully serene in black and white, explaining his life and work, contains many sensitively illustrated poems, but also contributions from children themselves. So that's quite a, a shocking difference comparing everything else was going on in, in 80s. Response was very good. Um, already in the second year, Tsitsiban was asking readers to send comments and to contribute with pictures, poems, stories, and this became a very important connection, um, and it was hugely encouraged by editors. This is proof of popularity in 60s. At least this is just a list of names of children who actually responded and sent contributions in just a few months. It's just a giant list, I think. The magazine is also full of published art made by children, and some of them are rather prophetic. Um, this actually might be the first proof how Maria Tita Puturc, who is an artist and architect working on social projects all over the world now, um, understood drawing and perspective at six. Yeah, I think it's rather stunning drawing. Another example, um, in 40s they published an article about Little Pianist as, as a good example of how much work and uh, patience she put into her art. And the little girl became one of the world famous pianists, Dubraka Tomšić, graduated at Juilliard in New York at 17 and studied with Arthur Rubenstein. Surely there, there were examples, you know, that people could actually look forward to. But illustrators, no, oh, five minutes, the most important part, obviously. It was really important um, that children know, knew who's illustrating for them. And these are lists of illustrators. Th these names don't mean anything to you, of course. Uh, they are prominent authors. And this list, this kind of list continued till today. It's just unbelievable that so many of elite of Slovenian culture participated in Tsitsiban. Um, this is Maxim Gaspari, one, to one of Art Nouveau protagonists who studied at Vienna, well known for his paintings and illustrations with folklore motifs and, and etc. Another was Iva Shubitz, for example. But what's more important? I, I know that you know you don't know about Prosherian Awards, but it's the highest decoration in the field of arts which you can get in Slovenia. And I actually went through the list, and such a high number of Tsitsiban illustrators um, and designers are actually on this list. So it's quite amazing, you know, what kind of level they wanted to establish. Uh, with strong waters, every cover was individual contribution to the visual char character of the periodical, obviously. And visual styles, styles really ranged from very complex to minimalist. And also the techniques were quite different from collage to graphical expression or different painting techniques. Um, I especially like the longer features because they were amazingly illustrated, superbly printed, and worked well with text. First years of the publishing, um, when it was still lithography, uh, all the text was printed in blue color, then they changed into gray and into brown at some point before the um, four, four color printing went in. Um, but all of this was very consistent all the time and coordinated colors and type and everything. Stunning pieces of art, harmonically working with the content of the poems. This is one collage, I think rather stunning for an almost a free-to-get magazine. Not rarely authors work for Tsitsiban and their artistic projects bear interesting similarities. Um, here we see Planins experimenting with color photography and drawing and uh, in a collage about African drums and you can see his color scheme in one of his paintings. This way, actually, the art from National Gallery entered households of Slovene children, even they, if they did not have the opportunity to go to the capital or would not be able to afford classics of Slovene literature. I'd also like to think that artists were giving sublime messages and commentary on political situations, such as here in the 60s, where Tito is actually portrayed of a sudden, all of a sudden as an angry-looking, fat, unkind beast. But generally, at that point, nobody yet was talking about post-war extrajudicial killings, which must have been approved by Tito. These topics were for new generations to discover later. We can also find strange examples of breaking the rules, coming into mainstream publishing for the first time. And authors uh, which contributed, uh, they were not coming just from Ljubljana's academy, but they were also studying in Vienna, Warsaw, Venice, Paris, Munich, 
One of them, the picture you see, is by Tomasz Kozicznik, who actually studied right here in Warsaw. And funny enough, this was one of the first illustrations I was exposed to, not knowing that in the future he's going to be my professor at the Academy of Fine Arts and Design in Ljubljana. So, to wrap it up, I think it is safe to say that Tsitsiban was an example of excellent editorial, typographical and publishing achievement unparalleled by any of the later examples in Slovenia. Designers and illustrators were opening new worlds and broadening perspective for children because they cared for children and they had a simple humanistic mission to educate through what they were doing the best. While we can hear critics that Tsitsiban was a regime propaganda tool, I don't think we should throw the baby out with the water. Instead, past must be reassessed objectively because important inspirations and le lessons can be drawn from that so we can build new things. Uh, this is not quite the end. I'll be researching more and writing all this up, and I'd very much like to take the opportunity, s since we are such an international community, uh, to pick your brain and get information about similar projects uh, like this in your countries. So I'd be very grateful if any of you uh, can get in touch with me if you have any information and you can help me out with this.